Well, good evening, my friends. I have uh, decided to try a seven o'clock on a Wednesday. And I got so inspired because I actually had a pretty good day. And I want to welcome you. Hi, Kim. Kim the Fabulous Mod and Raza Eco Warrior. And who else is here? Uh, Michael Lee. And cool. Very good. Hi, Scott. All right. Well, tonight I've got a lot to talk about. I've wanted to talk about the border wall for a really long time. I've got graphics, articles, videos, all kinds of stuff. So people are joining us. I thought, well, maybe I would, uh, and I'm only on YouTube tonight because I wanted to see if my, if I get slowed down, I'm, I'm like kind of testing the, the bandwidth and different things because it seems like I just get, uh, slowed down. Kim likes 4 p.m. Very awesome. Well, I'm going to start <clears throat> with the border wall, a video. We'll start with the video with the news that got me reinvigorated on the topic. So while people join, I'm going to play this lovely, lovely semblance of insanity. If uh, we get it going, here we go. And you know, Mexico is paying for the wall. And you know, Mexico is paying for the wall, just so you understand. They don't say that. They never say it. But we're going to charge a small fee at the border. You know, the toll booths. We're putting a small toll on, and maybe we're going to do something with remittance. That's where people come here, make money, and they send it back. So we'll do something, and we're going to get all the money that we spent on the wall will be coming back. Mexico will pay for the wall. 100%. They don't know it yet, but they're going to pay for the wall. And they're great people and great leaders, but they're going to pay for the wall. Any walls that were put up would get knocked down very quickly, very easily. This wall is not something that can be really knocked down. I guess anything can, but this is very tough. So I uh, I saw your comment, Jim. The standing joke is a three-foot wall at the Canadian border to keep Americans out because we can only clear a three-foot wall. <laughs> Spot on. This is going to be a good show. Or is that Tanya? Is it Tanya? Well, anyway, so I started out with that because it was what I had seen that sparked me to go into this whole thing. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um so I, I want to start with an article that we can talk about this. Uh, and I have like the worst allergies going on. I don't even have a tissue. Damn. You know what? I could use the, uh, this is a wasp's nest. I could take it. Could I use it as a tissue? <laughs> I keep it in the office because I'm always amazed at what it, what the wasps make it, how they make it. So it just sits in my little thing and I look at it. And uh, yeah, that was a good standing joke. Anyway, <clears throat> so let me take a sip. Okay, my battery's dying. Hang on a second. All right, did it clip in? Uh, something's always going on. Okay, show this first one. Actually, this is the background. This is the uh, wall in the wild and this was from center from for biological diversity but th this was in May 2017 and of course I'm not going to read all these but I have a lot of I have a lot of information and nobody's talking about the wall because everybody's talking about fires and rightly so everybody's talking about uh you know the hurricane that passed uh in and Louisiana by the way is still a mess 
Jackie Heinel, my friend who is with who goes with the Red Cross and is a soil sample. Well, I think she's a biologist who and she'll be a guest soon. She's a personal friend. Um, she said Louisiana is a mess, but I thought, let's do this. Nobody's talking about the border wall. Perhaps the people that live by the border, you know. So <clears throat> basically what I'm using in this, this is a whole report and you guys can see it. I'll have it in the uh, references if you're interested. The 93 endangered and candidate species, which would potentially be affected by the construction of a wall and related infrastructure spanning the entirety of the border, including, including the jaguars and Mexican gray wolves and Kino checker spot butterflies. This wall would degrade and destroy critical, it's probably already doing it now, this is in 2017, critical habitat for 25 species, including a total of 2,134,792 acres. <clears throat> yeah, lot, thousands, millions, that occur within 50 miles of the border. <coughs> Excuse me, it's not a dry cough either. Uh, species with critical habitat on the border include the jaguar, arroyo toad, and peninsular bighorn sheep. Studies on the portions of the border wall that have already been constructed demonstrate that the wall precludes movement of some wildlife. For example, the cactus Ferruginous uh, pygmy owl tends to fly low over the ground and avoids open areas, so the border wall will isolate U.S. birds from those in Mexico. This is true for a great many species as well. And <clears throat> it's just the animal part is it's a it's a killer. It hurts. And I have this little clip from, from whoops, I have this little clip from them. I'm sure it is, I hope this is the one. Oh yeah, here it is, let's watch this. See, all this diversity down there. Aren't they just the sweetest things? That was sweet. Wasn't it sweet? 
I just thought that was that would just bring a little bit of well, they're lovely creatures, as Poppy says. Um, all of them, but Poppy, you bring up an interesting issue about the javelinas because they've overrun Texas. I don't know where they are indigenous to the javelinas, but I had been reading about them, and uh, I don't know, are they a hunted species down there? I mean, they don't look very appetizing if you eat that kind of thing, right? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Animals, Jim, you said it. Animals without borders. This show is kind of like for you tonight. It's a small little group. Um, I, I didn't really announce it, and I'm just enjoying the the sharing of information with you. I'm I'm going to go on to the next article, which is from National Geographic, and this one has to do with. The, the water, the spring drying up, and as the border wall construction continues, the water is it's at an all-time low at the uh, Quito by Quito Springs, a culturally vital oasis home to two endangered species next to the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, this is what the, they says the area is known Quinto Paquito Springs is one of the only reliable above ground water sources in the Sonoran Desert. This oasis long provided water to the High Hyacet Odom, a tribe indigenous to the area. And rec records of human use and habitation go back more than 10,000 years. It's also home to two endangered species found nowhere else in the United States. And that's the uh, Sonoida pupfish and the Sonoran mud turtle. The spring is regarded as sacred, a living element provided to all from our elder teacher, says tribal elder Ophelia Rivas, referring to the Odom creator of God. And see that? Southwest Valley contractors because it's jobs. They work on the concrete. We love concrete. The base of the, the, the border wall near Lukeville, Arizona. It was a once quiet spot within Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument, but it's in trouble now. The flow of water in slow decline since the 1980s has dropped more than 30% since March. This pond is at its lowest level in more than a decade, exposing mud flaps throughout, mud flats, not mud flaps, <laughs> a potentially urgent situation for its endangered animal inhabitants. It's 200 feet from the border and contractors have already dug a six foot trench for an electrical grid within a stone's throw of it. Some walls are going up several miles to the east of the spring in Oregon Pipe and to the west in Cabeza Prieta National Wildlife Refuge. Now, just think about this. This is our country, the United States. Those of you who are here, it's our country, the United States. If it was the UK, like Roz is here with us, I would love him to speak about what goes on in the UK. Uh, but my frame of reference is the United States right now. Think about this, though. All the other countries in the world, what are the construction, especially like China, the construction going up, walls going up, concrete going up. This is just one thing. One thing. Think of all the habitats worldwide that are that are um, all over being destroyed. It's it's really mind boggling when you think about it. But this is this is the the focus for tonight. Uh, the so anyway, it is um, according to people that live there, it's unbelievable, it's horrible, it's going down and down, says Christina Andrews, a high said Odom leader. Of the spring flow and the pond level, she's visited the spring since childhood, and she has never seen it so depleted. It feels like a violation of, of innocence. And this, uh, this shows where it is, 
all the way down. I know Kim the Mod here. Our Kim Santino used to live in Arizona. Um, I don't see the the comments at the moment. Um, so this guy said the border patrol guy he said it's not unusual for the water levels to fluctuate but you know if the people that have been living there for 10,000 years think there's a problem maybe there is you know uh so that's one thing that's going on and that's that's water woes and i have a little um a little thing on some activism that's going on down there and I'm going to show you what they've been doing. That. Right now we're at the border wall site construction leading towards the way of the sacred site, Quito Paquito, sacred for the Hiached and Tonawatan people. So right here we have some activists that are physically putting their bodies on the line to stop the desecration of Quito Paquito Springs. They're physically putting their bodies in front of these vehicles. That was a pretty moving clip. Let me tell you, it really moved me. We've been seeing uh, in the videos that uh, that are highlighted in our streams, or when you if you turn on the the TV, uh, the 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 unrest in the cities and the Black Lives Matter movement. But really, there's a lot more going on. And the indigenous, I mean, it's it's been before since before Standing Rock. I remember in the 70s when the Senecas took over the thruway in New York and it's it's they've they've been fighting for their sovereign lands and this is no different and this is happening now so mainstream media isn't going to show this perhaps the media that's down in uh, Arizona they might show something because the locals obviously know but this wasn't it doesn't look like this was a big action but it it, it was an action nonetheless it was an action and uh all of this related to the border wall and i actually have a couple of screenshots um but i don't know which one is which so if I show it to you, yeah, that was that was the gal in the bucket loader. And she was, that's, they couldn't work with her there, could they now? So she's, I believe, who got arrested. And a very passionate gal. 
I mean, really passionate about that area and what is theirs. And that's a, a, a little shot of, of the arrest. And these are the small actions, though, that get into big actions. And, and, and they have to stay happening because the lawmakers have to wake up and see that, that not everything has to be destroyed. But this administration currently, unfortunately, it is being destroyed faster than previously expected, basically. Um, the Oh, wait, I, I didn't get there yet. Sorry, that's not where I wanted to be. That's more destruction. See the destruction, the picture behind me? I chose that is plowing through to build that wall. It's so disturbing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, let's move on. Let's move on. It's very disturbing to me. And I have another article. And this one is... This was not about Godiva chocolates. <laughs> oh, where is the article? Oh, my God. Can you, can you imagine this? Is this insane that godiva chocolates is all i'm pulling up unless it's not the article <laughs> now or is that a sign sandy have some chocolate <laughs> which i don't have here i think it's a i think it's a random link my goodness i'm closing that one what do you think guys is that a random um occurrence I'm not that big on chocolate in the last couple of years, but it's easy, right? One of those things in life, like we were talking about um, last night with Jennifer, we were talking about coffee. And today on Kevin's show, talking about coffee <laughs> and hoarding coffee. And I'm going to send Kevin some honey because he can't get local honey and I can. He's in LA and there's a lot of water. So I'm going to help him out. So this article is about the unique wetlands endangered water supply. And it's pretty much the same going through the information from the Center for uh, Biological Diversity. And it's just, it's, it's awful just to see the, the construction, the planet eaters. I, I really don't like this. And it's, it's more of the same. This is the environmental. Uh, so the agency in charge of building the border wall received repeated warnings tap water from nearby wells and the unique wetlands of southeastern arizona yes arizona that's where it happened immigration of officials did not heed the warnings then several ponds at san bernardino national wildlife refuge found themselves without water or with an extremely low supply, according to documents obtained by two different environmental groups. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the agency in charge of the refuge, said in a statement on Thursday that ponds remain intact and the refuge continues to manage for endangered fish and wildlife. Yeah, right. The contract is working for the U.S. Customs and Border Protection that very trusted agency that we all know and love for caging children, yes, that very same one, uh, they began building a new stretch of border wall there in October, pumping millions of gallons of groundwater to mix cement for the 30-foot, 9-meter steel fencing that has been a signature promise of President Donald Trump. The Trump administration has promised to build 450 to 724 kilometers of wall along the border with Mexico by the end of the year. It has so far built 275 miles. The San Bernardino National Wildlife Refuge was established in 1982 to protect those rare wetlands in the middle of the desert. And so that's a very, very diverse, very rich ecosystem. And 
there's fish that are protected by the Endangered Species Act, which I doubt this administration cares about. Sitting on 2,300 acres on the U.S.-Mexico border in southeastern Arizona, which is close to New Mexico, it's home to hummingbirds and 75 species of butterflies, bats, and most importantly, to fish native uh, to Rio Yaqui, which the refuge was set up to protect. It's a pretty magical place, said uh, Randy Seraglio, Southwest Conservation Advocate for the Center of, for Biological Diversity. The analogy is an oasis, really. That's why the water withdrawals are so damaging. Well, that refuge in itself is supposed to be protected under environmental laws, but the government has waived those in the name of border security. So, other than fish and wildlife service employees who manage the refuge, the environmental groups that oppose construction, the refuge, and other ecological treasures have no protections when it comes to border wall construction. Dozens of records obtained by the Center for Biological Diver Diversity, which has sued to stop border wall construction, show months of warning from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife employees in charge of the refuge that went largely ignored. The agency pleaded to refrain from drilling groundwater from any wells within a five-mile radius of the refuge, using a 2003 study showing that doing so would be detrimental to the water supply. And I'll tell you what, 2003 study showing it would be just as relevant now, how many years later? If it showed it then, and then it's it's probably much worse. So um, the report, they did it anyway. So the report by the Fish and Wildlife Service that was obtained by the Defenders of Wildlife, which is another conservation group down there, they opposed the border wall, says the contractors withdrew millions of gallons of water. And they operate outside the law with no regard for other federal agencies and public lands and natural resources. So it's another instance of this administration railroading over what are established protocols, established relationships. It's just they are brazenly crooked. <laughs> They're ugly. <laughs> they don't go, they don't follow the law. And even in water. And fish and wildlife down there had documented a correlated drop in deep aquifer wellhead pressure. So it's, it's a mess. And to correlate that, I have a little video that, <clears throat> that I'll show. I showed the, those and I have, oh yeah, okay. I, Pretty sh but sure I didn't show this one. This is the cons. I know it's low.
I, di I didn't make that clip. So hello. Hello, Stephen. I didn't make the clip. And uh, I just liked it. So I thought it would be interesting to show you because it showed the construction down there. The planet eating that is happening down there. Um, this is the, uh, Twitter. And, and this is the two pictures that I have. I had behind me. So how it's cut into the land. I mean, this is how all construction works. But to me, this was unnecessary. I don't think that anyone needed this wall. <laughs> I honestly don't. And we're going to get into just a little bit of what I mean, we really don't. Uh, we we and the reasons why people come here. That's going to be next. I'm going to get to that because a little bit we all know why people are that's a lot of climate refugees climate change refugees and it's it's just it's really tough these were this this was before um these pictures but i showed them to you already so i don't need that one um and i don't think i want to go through this whole thing it was just a fact check on the wall and how much they built. And I really don't want to look at him. Uh, there was, uh, I guess, a meme that goes over. So it said 300 miles of that wall have been, have been built, but five miles are new. So we had a lot of the wall before that. But it, 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 it who liked it then? <laughs> I, I don't like it at all. I don't like the wall at all. There you go. Um, all right. So we're going to segue over to really the reasons why the paranoia was having a wall. Why did this become such a, a political campaign promise by Donald Trump? Well, because of Donald Trump's inherent racism. And he probably seized on it and felt the pulse of people that he knew and what he felt about immigration and people coming here without thinking that a lot of the immigration from Mexico was because of corporations, companies, U.S. businesses that hired Mexican cheap labor and the, the desire for people to have a better life, which they think they can find in the United States. Ronald Reagan welcomed them with open arms and he stood at the border of Mexico because he knew the financial boon for his buddy pals, I think. And, uh, okay, but Mexico isn't doing that bad. They've given loans to small farmers and created lots of jobs too. <coughs> Excuse me. Not many people are coming to the U.S. anymore. Sorry. Well, but people are going to Mexico. I can just take it aside. If you ever watch House Hunters on HGTV, gosh. And uh, there's House, Hunter, House Hunters International. People are moving all over. Mexico, South America, Costa Rica, all over. And Americans with money go down there and they're plunking their money down. And now pristine areas in Mexico on the coast and I saw in Costa Rica, different areas are all being built up because of Americans. Actually, and they're, they're leaving America. They're leaving the United States to move. And I suppose if you have the money... Kim, I need an inhaler. Well, I have allergies now. It's awful. It just started. Thanks for caring. I don't mean to cough into the thing, and it's not a dry cough. It is allergies every year this year. Uh, but thank you for caring, Kim. All right. So to make a long story short, which never actually happens, this was uh, a, a piece of an article I found that describes why and it says what's happening at the border in five charts and this was from last November 
And basically, it is the statistics of how many people. So we've talked about the wall. We've talked about the ecological damage, the wildlife. And, and now we're going to look at the actual immigration and apprehensions at the border, which are, uh, they more than doubled between 18 and 19. So they, but they, they stayed below historical highs. And then number two, that was a major shift in who is being apprehended with non-Mexicans, far outnumbering Mexicans. Absolutely. That's happening because they're coming. There's a story, uh, I had read in, and I don't remember what magazine, but it was a really heart wrenching story about a young family and their struggles and what happened to the young man who was found in the desert by the border patrol and why he came and it, 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 it wrenched my heart because he came for that better life to get away from bad farming conditions, to get away from corruption, I suppose. And there were problems with his family and he wanted to be the one to, to go to the new land, you know, the promised land, I suppose. And he lost his life doing it. In the, I th prior to the Trump administration, a lot of the crossings either had people meeting them or it was easier to do somewhat. And it's driving the uh, cartels basically to charge these people that are a lot of them climate change migrants and they'll sometimes charge them like 10,000 American US dollars and they drop them they don't there's no other meet up with another vehicle to take them into California or anything like that they drop them at the desert it is brutal and awful, and so many people lose their lives. Now, is the wall a deterrent to that? I don't think anything's going to be a deterrent when people want to make something better for their families than, or where they are coming from is so horrible and oppressive and that they'd be willing to, you know, they're, 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 they're risking their lives for this. And it's really sad because a lot of them, a lot of these people that want to get out of El Salvador, Guatemala and Honduras, you know, they're just, they're human beings that are looking for something better. And there's families, families now, more families, which is a big shift from the recent past. So it's really what's happening in those countries. El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, what policies were implemented that made for this immigration and uh, what attitudes in the United States are being stoked and, 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 and fired up to have no empathy or, or care for these people to help with humanitarian efforts in their countries and not wars. Will we ever have that happen? So the changing profile of being apprehended has strained uh, the Border Patrol. Yeah. Well, of course it has because they've grown. Apprehension rose in every border sector in fiscal 2019, especially the El Paso section. But you see... Yes, Rio Grande, El Paso, Yuma, Tucson, San Diego, Del Rio, Laredo, El Centro, Big Bend. Probably different kinds of entries also. But a wall is not ending or, or even looking at the problem of why it's happening. Seasonable migration patterns have changed in recent years. So they've, it's, of course they have. They are actually changing. People are coming in in more, uh, well, scary times, says perilous in there, but scary times. And we hate them. 
not all of us in a collective we, but we have such a, a hate and a fear campaign in this country against people and we don't even we don't even talk about addressing why it's happening and then there is denial with that if you talk about why it's happening most of them will say people will say well the ones as deniers climate change isn't real they're not coming away they just want to take advantage of and take our jobs and all this ugliness and it's our job to educate people that no that's not the truth. And I'm not prepared to discuss the interventions the United States took in any of these countries at the moment. But there is, uh, you know, <laughs> there's some blame to go around, I guess. Poppy says only a fraction try to cross outside the official border gates anyway. The whole thing is a useless waste of people, place, and nature. I agree with you 100%. Basically, I, you summed it all up for the whole show, <laughs> Poppy. You did. Oh, so at that note, I'm going to show another little um, video that I assembled. Isn't it insane looking? Look at that. Whoever took it, they sped it up. But that's all of that resource, all of those resources, right? All of those resources. Oh, boy. That's what it looks like. Because, you know, we're all in different places. So being in different places, we are... Uh, not always visualizing what's happening down there. Okay, so the next thing I have for you is I do have one more piece, I believe. And this one is, um, this one's from ProPublica. And then because we've made our way from animals to people, and this is where I had that picture from this article and it talks about where will everyone go and this piece is quite new it's from July 2020 and they did they ProPublica and New York Times and uh, with support from the Pulitzer Center have for the first time modeled how climate refugees might move across international borders so this actually goes through quite a lot we're not going to go through the whole thing, but this is, uh, this might be the story. I, no, it's not the same story I read, but it's talking about the, the hundreds of thousands of Guatemalans have fled north. And uh, the odd weather phenomenon that many blame for the suffering there, the drought and, su and sudden um, storm pattern known as El Nino is expected to become more frequent as the planet warms. So many semi-arid parts of Guatemala will soon be like a desert. Rainfall is expected to decrease by 60% in some parts of the country, and the amount of water replenishing streams and keeping soil moist will drop by as much as 83%. Researchers project that by 2070, yields of some stable crops in the state where George lives will decline by a third. So that's, <laughs> try talking about that with, your Trump supporting neighbor and see if there's even any understanding of these pro these 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 processes these things going on outside of the, their little world it's pretty heavy duty and uh, there's a lot going on with this this article, I'm, again, I said I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but there is, they're talk, they talk about food production and um, 
they're talking about Southeast Asia, where increasingly unpredictable monsoon rainfall and drought have made farming more difficult. The World Bank points to more than 8 million people who move toward the Middle East, Europe, and North Africa. So basically, the migration is saying, where are people going? Where are people going? And look, this is people, they're just, they're taking their belongings and they are trying to get their water and they're trying to see the river that once flowed through the Nuevo Paraiso indigenous community is now just a stream. Residents depend on it for all their water needs and they're afraid it will completely dry up migration. And of course (laughs) now, and, and, and I'm not, I don't want to sound, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to say it. Populations have to stop populating. All of them. United States everywhere. And one of the big problems is faith and birth control. And I, I really don't even have to go in. That's another whole, s- a, another show. The, 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 the Christians going around the world and uh, prophesizing and converting and changing people and they don't believe in birth control. So how are we ever going to help that when we can't even educate people or help educate them and especially in our country where it's getting worse and worse and worse to have any kind of funding to help with these programs to help these people so even providing it so that they don't have children when they can't afford it or they don't they don't expect it and that that's the same in our country that's the same in Europe that's the same in Africa it's the same everywhere and we're also you know in the the political climate in our country is we've lost we're going to lose a woman's right to choose we're going backwards baby but I digress. Let me get back to this. We will lose a woman's right to choose. Have Trump stay in. So I want to, um, I wanted to find any more pictures that we could look at. Okay, see, in one scenario, globalization with its relatively open borders continues. And this is showing uh, South America and, and the, that's the migration patterns. In, in this article. And as climate changes, drought and food insecurity drive rural residents in Mexico and Central America out of their countryside. They seek relief in big cities. Urbanization is like crazy and they push farther north towards the United States. They pro- the projected number of migrants arriving from Central America and Mexico rises to 1.5 million a year by 2050 from about 700,000 a year in 2025. But yet <laughs> their faith will dictate that they just have to keep having kids. And I hate to sound like this. It's, it's just, for me, it is... A, a female issue. It is a, a control and female issue. It is not a, a an issue of uh, race or it's an issue of economics, but it is a female issue. Females should be able to have 100% control and not be told that they have to have so, you know, so many ki- children. We modeled another scenario in the United States Uh, hardens its borders people are turned back in economic growth and south america slows as does urbanization so the whole thing they have a nice nifty uh presentation there and they they um it's a it's a long one i really heartily suggest that you guys look at this when when i am done or refer it and expand your minds this is climate migrants from honduras and they are um they hop a train this is what it's like people just take what they have and they're going that's it oh boy i don't even want to go into all of the science i'm looking for the pictures that are um relevant for this 
San Salvador. She moved to the city after drought made farm work impossible for her parents and her husband was murdered by gang members. That's not so much different than cities in the United States. And a lot of people want to come here and they don't realize that in the United States, we have the same dynamic. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we do. In so many ways. And now we have all the white supremacists thrown in, which we've had, but they've been a little less vocal before this. Uh, we have... We have every fringe group coming out. It's a scary place. Maybe we need to educate people from South America that this is not the place you want to come. And if they, 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 or they're going to get stuck at the border and live like that in prison camps. All right, guys. I've been here for a while. We have any comments before I, I end this? I, I think I only had one more article. I really wanted to spur the thinking and bring up the topic of the border because it hasn't been discussed and there's so much to it. And everybody's talking about the fires. Gary said, yes, we have fires, lots and lots of fires. That's probably what's happening in... the. Uh, it's all over. It's all over. Hi, Rich Diana. We and Viros are not the majority. No, you can't get anyone to really understand the enormity of these issues. And a lot of people would rather just think of an issue like migration as an issue to hate them. <sighs> A uh, lot of comments, a lot of comments. Cool. Well, I, I hope you guys liked my presentation. I, uh, I don't know if I have another video to end up with. Yeah, I do. I have one more. Might as well watch it. Yeah, so that's what it looks like. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming. I think it was a productive a productive session here to to go over the 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 news of the day and look at this issue and uh and if you missed the beginning, it'll be lot it'll be on the on the channel. It's not on Facebook, but um there you go. So peace out, guys. Have a great evening. Use your brains and educate those around you if you can. Mm -hmm.